This is a quick tutorial on how to uh, register the sensor with the new updates regarding the Eiler Diagnostics. Uh, this tutorial will just go through the first initial steps that's pretty familiar to everyone in terms of registering the unit. And then we'll show the couple uh, of the pages where it is different when it comes to registering the unit and uh, registering it to an asset. So as you can see, the first part to select an account is very important. So make sure you select the right account that's associated to your company or your personal account. You register it, you claim the sensor according to our terms and conditions, which is available right here, as well as on the eilert.com page. And once you claim the sensor, then you will be able to uh, put the tag name, which you can name it anything according to uh, your particular asset. For right now, I'll just name it test. And then you go to the next option, which tells you where the asset is, uh, where the sensor is located on the asset. So in this case, we just do equipment drive-in, but you can see you have different options where equipment non-drive-in, motor drive-in, and motor non-drive-in. And uh, like I said, let's just go for the equipment drive-in for right now. Uh, the orientation, this is a default orientation, and you can change it according to your installation. Uh, in this case, I'm not going to explain what run baseline manual set alarm is, but for right now, for this particular tutorial, we'll just say use existing alarms. So right now, everything should look the same. Nothing's really changed in these four steps. You connect to it, you send to set the settings, what we just set in terms of tag name, orientation, and everything. But right now, this is where it's, you'll see uh, changes from the previous, up, the previous before the update, now with the update. So before we just associate to an asset uh, and that's about it with, the, with some information about uh, the pump which is that which the sensor might be on or some kind of um, other equipment that the, that the sensor is on but for right now we will be associating the sensor to an asset train so the asset train consists of your driven driver and intermediate so for this particular um, uh, case study we'll just name it as pump test and then the next thing will be the orientation, which is horizontal, vertical, line frequency, usually 60 hertz for uh, all of America. And this is where it's also important because you want to know where in your account do you want to associate this to. So this is something that you want to make sure that you, you uh, associate to the right area, to the right plant and to the right zone. And once that is all defined, then you want to define information about the driven intermediate driver. So in this, in this occasion, we will just do the driven as a, a pump. Like you can see, there's a bunch of different, okay, different uh, options that you can do. Uh, and this, uh, the next will be equipment category. So if it is a centrifugal pump with overhung rotor, but you can see the different options. And all of this, there's multiple choice for different options you pick, depending on the equipment type. Once you have done that, you want to then define what the bearing arrangement is. And then the speed. So all this information is very critical for our diagnostics to work proper, but there's other information that you can fill in here that can make it even more accurate. But at the same time, there are mandatory fields. So once you're done filling this out, when you click save, if they say that, hey, you need to fill this particular information out, those are the mandatory fields. But then you might see the intermediate driver and uh, driven uh, show a yellow color meaning it's not completely filled but it will still run the diagnostics so like i'm doing right now you want to define the different uh, options for the intermediate in this case just a coupling and it's a rigid coupling the driver's side we just want to say for right now it's a motor you want to do the like each different category has its different uh, subdivisions where you need to explain everything to it but for right now, for this particular setting, we'll just define it uh, to what I have in front of me. And then after that, once I have everything, in, uh, all the major information filled out, I click save. And once I click save, I'm pretty much ready to go and run my diagnostics. But like I said, in the beginning, you have to fill out the mandatory information, but to get the most optimized results and most accurate results, you would have to put all the other informations. So once you're complete, you can go to the diagnostics page and you can uh, request a new FFT uh, spectrum by downloading a new spectrum right there, or you can download all the alarm spectrums as well. So for right now, let's just download a new spectrum 
and one diagnostics against it. So once you download the new FFT, the diagnostics will, improve, will be done automatically and then you can see this one has no maintenance recommendations for your asset according to the diagnostics. So you can then uh, pretty much know that this one has no real any any kind of any uh, faults associated to the spectrum uh, and if you do have any issues with the faults uh, with the with the spectrum that has faults it will show all the information right on this page under the diagnostics uh, option in the menu bar if you want to see the spectrum you just click on this particular button right there and then you can see the spectrum associated to your diagnostics and if you want to make your diagnostics even more accurate you would want to then take uh, spectrums when it's running normally and mark them as normal like you can see over there and once you do that any uh, alarm spectrums that will be coming from this particular asset will have something to refer to when it's normally running as well so those are the things that we recommend for you guys to uh, implement in when you register these sensors to get the best out of the diagnostics as well as to get the most accurate result when it comes to diagnostics. Hope this helps and if you have any questions please reach out to iAlert at support.ai um, for any need in terms of demo or any need in terms of support. Thanks.